Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad, kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim fil alameen, innaka hamidun majid amma ba'du. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, dear brothers and sisters, welcome to our sixth episode of It's Only to Raka, the often neglected prayers. In this series, we intend to cover the Sunnah Salah that has been left and preserved for us from the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. For indeed, the prayer is one of extreme importance in our daily life. The Muslim cannot go without a single day without making Salah to his Lord. And this is the life of the Muslim. As compared to other religions and other faiths, they have their own traditions, but the Muslim is known for the prayer. It is indeed the most recognizable symbol across the globe. It is the Salah when a person is standing and he has his prayer mat in front of him. Every single person knows across the globe, whether they are Muslim or non-Muslim, this person is in prayer. And we know that inside of the prayer, we have stepped out of this world and we are in a comfort zone. Why? Because we are between the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are standing in front of our Lord and we are communicating with him. Every time we recite Surah Al-Fatiha, we are actually conversing with Allah. In the beautiful and lengthy hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, and this is Hadith Al-Qudusi, that when my servant recites Surah Al-Fatiha, the Salah, I have divided it into two portions. My slave, he responds, and I respond back to him. So when he says, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Allah, he says, Hamadani Abdi. My slave has just praised me. And when he says, Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, and my slave, he has praised me again. And when he says, Maliki Yawmiddin, Allah, he responds to that. So my dear brothers and sisters, we should never be people who race in the salah. Because every ayah that you recite from Surah Al-Fatiha, Allah, he responds back to you. How would it be if you are reciting Surah Al-Fatiha extremely quickly? Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, Rahman, Rahim, Malik, You don't even give Allah time to respond back to you. This is an intimate moment. This is a conversation between you and Allah Jalla wa'ala. May Allah be glorified. So we should take this time to understand the Salah, to develop a respect for the Salah, and to develop our love and admiration of this amazing prayer. In Alhamdulillah, Nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nastaghfiru wa na'udhu billahi min shuroori anfusina wa min sayyati a'malina min yahdihillahu fala mudillala wa min yudlil fala hadiyala wa ashadu an la ilaha illa Allah وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله. My dear brothers and sisters, in today's episode, we will be taking another Sunnah prayer that is attached to one that we have taken before. In the previous episode, I believe it was the fifth episode, we discussed the Sunnah prayer of Salatul Duha, and we discussed it and took it in detail. But another prayer that is connected to that prayer, which some of the scholars have said is a separate prayer in and of itself, but the majority of the scholars, the jumhur of the ulama, they have said both of these prayers is one in the same. The prayer that we will take today is Salatul Ishraq, the prayer after sunrise. Salatul Ishraq, the prayer that is done after sunrise. And as we have mentioned in the previous episode, there are many scholars who believe that Salatul Ishraq is the same as Salatul Duha, but we are dedicating a whole entire episode to describe this prayer of Salatul Ishraq. This hadith is taken on the authority of Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu, and it is found in the Sunan of Imam At-Tirmidhi rahimahullah. Who is Anas ibn Malik? It is extremely important that when we take the hadith from these companions, we kind of know who we are taking the hadith from. It is not merely something that we should just read off quickly. Abu Hurairah, he said, Abdullah bin Mas'ud, he said, Abdullah bin Abbas, he said, Abdullah bin Umar, he said, and we just jump to the hadith. Rather, we should look to who narrated, who is narrating the hadith so that we may benefit from this. There is a benefit in knowing who is telling the story. There is an extreme benefit in it. Anas ibn Malik, radiallahu anhu, 
he was a small child when he met the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. For Anas' mother, Umm Anas ibn Malik, she came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when the Prophet came to Medina. For as we know, the Prophet spent 13 years in Mecca and then he made hijrah. He traveled for Allah's sake and he went to the blessed city of al Medina. And when he reached al Medina, the people were so happy. Anas ibn Malik, he said in another hadith that on the day the Prophet came to Medina, it was light everywhere. Everyone was so happy and excited. And on the day that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam returned back to his Lord, it was the darkest day of Medina because the Prophet was no longer with us. So this was the day when the Prophet came to Medina and everyone was excited. Everyone wanted to give the Prophet something and offer him something to show their love, to show their support, to show their allegiance to this religion of Al-Islam. And so the mother of Anas ibn Malik, she was a widow. She had nothing. She had no work. And the only thing that she possessed was her son, Anas. She had no work. She had no husband. She had nothing. But she wanted to support the religion. And this shows you that the believer, man or woman, he will find something to help Islam. You young people, do not just sit home and say, well, I'm not working. I cannot give at fundraisers when your local masjid is trying to support. But you should go to the imam and you should say, I want to volunteer my time. Yes, I'm young. I don't have a job. I don't have a car, but I want to volunteer my time. What can I do? Can I clean the masjid? Can I wipe down the Quran and wipe down the books? Can I help in building a shoe rack so that we may have the proper place for our elders to come? Can I clean the bathroom area? Can I donate my time to help teach the children in reading the Quran? There is something that you can do. There is something that each and every one of us can do if we would only take the time out to search in ourselves. Anas ibn Malik, he said that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Man sallal ghadata that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, مَنْ صَلَّ الْغَدَاتَ فِي جَمَاعَةٍ ثُمَّ قَعَدَ يَذْكُرُ اللَّهَ حَتَّى تَصْلُ الشَّمْسُ Whoever prays Salatul الصُّبْحِ Salatul الْفَجْرِ Or as is collected in this hadith, صلاة الْغَدَاتَ The morning prayer. Whoever prays the morning prayer, Salat al Subh, Salat al Fajr, or Salal, what? Al Ghadata, meaning the prayer that is done in the morning. Fi jama'atin, in jama'ah, in the collective. He doesn't pray it at home. He doesn't pray it in uh, on the train or at the airport or in his room. No, he prays it in jama'ah, in congregation. Meaning he wakes up and he goes to the masjid. ثم قعد يذكر الله حتى تطلع الشمس. And then he sits in his place, and he remembers Allah يذكر الله. He remembers Allah with what? سبحان الله الحمد لله والله أكبر ولا إله إلا الله. Or he remembers Allah with reciting the Quran. Reciting the Quran is remembrance of Allah as well. So. Whoever prays Salatul Fajr in Jama'ah, inside of the Masjid, and he sits after he has finished the prayer, and he remembers Allah until the sun has risen, Hatta tatlu shamsu, until the sun it rises, Thumma salla rak'atain, kanat lahu ka ajri hajjatin wa umratin. Allahu Akbar. Get this with me. A person, he wakes up in the morning, he makes his wudu, and then he makes his way to the masjid. He prays Salatul Fajr, or Sallal Ghadata. He prays Salatul Subh, the morning prayer. Fi jama'atin, in jama'at, in congregation. Thumma qa'ada yathkurullah hatta tutlu shams. And then he sits in his place, and he remembers Allah until sunrise. ثُمَّ صَلَّ رَكْعَتَيْنْ كَانَتْ لَهُ كَأَجْرِ حَجَّةٍ وَعُمْرَةٍ He will receive the reward of Hajj and Umrah. Allahu Akbar.
Allahu Akbar, amazing. Without visa, without buying a ticket, without making uh, accommodations, without a mutawwif, without any of these things for those of you who have made the hajj and know the difficulty of the hajj, for those of you who are poor, for those of you who are miskeen, who do not have the funds, for those of you who are not working yet or who are between jobs, you want to make this hajj, you want to make the umrah, you want to get the reward of hajj and umrah, you can do so every single morning if you desired. If you so desired, if you so wanted, you would wake in the morning, get out of your bed, maybe not every day because you have school and you have work, but maybe you make these two rakah of Salatul Ishraq, meaning the two rakah after Salatul Fajr on your days off, once a week, twice a week, but at least you know weekly you are making Hajj and Umrah, you can get this reward. The Prophet wasallam he said after this, because you know many people are thinking, oh no, the Prophet is just speaking allegorically. There's no way I can get the complete and full reward of Hajj and Umrah by simply just making two rakah in the masjid. My masjid is just a small little masjid, only a hundred people in there. It's a small little masjid that still needs to be worked on. It's not the masjid al-haram. It's not masjid al-nabawi. It's not any of these things. Rather, it is just something that is very, very delicate and very, very easy. The Prophet, he said, to remove any of these ideas, to remove any of these ideas that you do not think you will get the full reward, qala qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, tammatin, tammatin, tammatin. Completely, completely, completely. Meaning, if you doubted that you would have this reward, know for sure you will get the reward of Hajj wa Umrah, tammatin, tammatin, tammatin. Completely, completely, completely. And this hadith, as we mentioned, is on the authority of Anas ibn Malik, radiallahu anhu, and it is found in the Sunan of Imam at Tirmidhi. And this hadith, was classed, meaning was graded as a hadith that was Hassan in the Sahih of Imam Al-Albani, rahimahullah, the great muhaddith of our time. As it relates to the four issues that is connected to this prayer of Salatul Ishraq, we have the prayer's authority under the Sharia. What is this prayer's duty or authority in our religion? Must you pray the two rakah of Salatul Ishraq? or what is known as Salatul Duha, after the Fajr Salah, after Salatul Subh, after the morning prayer. If you have been a student of mine and you have been watching this series from the beginning until this episode, the sixth episode, you would know the answer to this question, for we have taken it in every single episode. This prayer, as well as the other prayers, all of these Sunnah prayers, they are mustahab. They are highly recommended. It is not an obligation to pray the two rakah after Salatul Fajr. It is not an obligation. As long as you come to the masjid and you pray Salatul Fajr, you will get a tremendous reward from Allah and you can go about your day. But if you have the time, if you are not busy, if it's the weekend, you have the day off, I ask you, why wouldn't you sit and make dhikr of Allah until sunrise and then pray these two rakah so that you may receive the reward of Hajj and Umrah. Tamma, tamma, tamma. Complete, complete, complete reward. Why wouldn't you do so? Only a person who is kaslan, he's lazy, he wouldn't do so. But the person who is motivated, the person who is virtuous, he will take this opportunity even if it is once a week, to make sure that he wakes and get his behind to the masjid so that he can pray these two rakah of Salatul Ishraq or what is known as Salatul Duha and receive this tremendous reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the authority of this prayer under the Sharia ah is that it is mustahab. And mustahab, it means it is highly recommended sunnah for you to do it. As for the second issue connected to this prayer, the reason for praying Salatul Ishraq. What is the reason for praying it? It is so that you may get the reward of Hajj and Umrah. It is so that you may seek out the good deeds. My dear brothers and sisters, don't get it twisted. We are in this dunya so that we can accumulate the most good deeds. Why? Because on the day of judgment, we will be raised up in front of Allah and all of our deeds will be weighed. Our deeds will be placed on the mizan. What is the mizan? It will be placed on the scale. 
who's ever done a lot of good deeds and the scale tips in his favor, he will enter into paradise. And whoever does no good deeds or rather commits a lot of sins and transgression, then the scale will tip in the bad side and he will be thrown into the fire of hell. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us from his punishment and from his anger. So each and every day that you are alive is another opportunity that you can gain the good deeds. Each and every day that you are alive is another opportunity that you can gain Allah's favor and reward and that you can fill the scale on your behalf with the good deeds, with the hasanat. Sheikh Ibn Uthaymeen, rahimahullah, the great scholar of our time, he was asked, it says in the hadith, ya Sheikh, the one who sits in his place where he prayed after the Fajr prayer, until the sun rises, it will be as if he receives the complete reward of Hajj and Umrah, or words similar to that effect. Does that mean that the one who will do that will have the real reward of Hajj and Umrah? We know the Prophet, he said it. But does it mean something else? I mean, is it really possible, Ya Shaykh, that you get the reward of Hajj and Umrah just for praying the two rakah of Salat al-Ishraq? Qala Ibn Uthaymeen, rahimahullah. Ibn Uthaymeen, he said, this hadith is subject to further discussion, meaning a lot of scholars have had an opinion about this. Many scholars have classed it as being da'if. Some of the scholars, many scholars have said, this hadith is weak. But if we assume that the hadith is sahih, because we have that Shaykh al-Albani, he graded the hadith as being sahih. It is authentic. If we assume that the hadith is authentic, the reward of Allah is not subject to an analogy. Meaning, if the hadith is in fact authentic, and as we mentioned, this hadith has been authenticated by Shaykh al-Albani in his book, The Sahih of Imam al-Tirmidhi, he graded the hadith as hasan, meaning the hadith is sound. It is good. It is something that we can act upon. He said, that the reward of Allah is not subject to analogy, meaning you cannot say, oh, it's just an analogy. It doesn't really mean that because Allah, he is al-ghani. He is the king of kings. He owns everything. What is it to Allah if he gives you the reward of Hajj and Umrah just for two rakah? Will Allah lose anything? No. Allah, he owns everything. And Allah is al kareem That is from his beautiful names and attributes. He is al kareem meaning he is the most generous. Allah, he is Al-Jawad, meaning he is even more generous than that. My dear brothers and sisters, Ibn Uthaymeen, he said, a person may be rewarded greatly for a small deed. Think about that. Do you remember the hadith when the Prophet Sallallahu said that a man saw a dog that was thirsty and he took his own shoe, put it in his mouth, climbed down the well, filled up his shoe with water and brought it for the dog to drink? What did Allah give him just for giving a dog water? Allah gave him paradise. So no one should think that just by doing a small deed, you cannot get a great reward. The man gave the thirsty dog just a shoe full of water and Allah gave him al-Jannah for it. So, because the reward is a bounty from Allah that he gives to whomsoever he wills, then we cannot assume that Allah will not give the reward of Hajj and Umrah for the individual who prays to rakah after the Salah of Al-Fajr. The third issue. What is the time for this prayer? The time for this prayer is as mentioned in the hadith. That the prayer of Fajr has to be offered in the masjid. Fi jama'atin. As the Prophet ﷺ said. Thumma he sits in his place. Wa yathkurullah. And he remembers Allah. Hatta tutlu'u shams. Until the sun he rises. So the time for this prayer is such. You pray Fajr. You sit down, you remember Allah with dhikr, with Qur'an. When the sun has risen, you stand up and you make the two rakah. This is the time for this prayer. This is where you will get the reward. Tamma, tamma, tamma. Complete, complete, complete reward. And last but not least is the fourth issue, the description of this prayer. What is the description of this prayer? 
its description is like every other prayer that we have taken. As we are summarizing the book, it's only to raka, the often neglected prayers. And as you see from the cover, it is simply to raka. So, Salatul Duha, Salatul Sunnah al Rawatib, Atahiyatul Masjid, Salatul Ishraq, all of these prayers are only two raka. So, my dear brothers and sisters, I remind you that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made this religion extremely easy for us. For those of you who wish to seek the reward of Hajj and Umrah, then you can seek it out by simply making two raka of Salatul Ishraq. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika shadu an la ilaha illa ant astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Call of Peace, Save Humanity.